Hey everybody, Derek here from Krua. Um, exciting evening. I'm going out to camp, hopefully, on Freenet Lighthouse. Something that has been on the bucket list for a long time. So I'm going to try it tonight. I'm going a little bit later than I had hoped to, just because there was a thunder and light, lightning warning in place here in Ireland. Um, but we're getting out there now. I uh, just had to wait for that to blow over. Huge amount of history in that lighthouse, as there is in all these lighthouses, I guess. So we'll run through that when we get out there. And uh, yeah, exciting. This thing's a beast. So that's the end of my fish flop. Shame on you. So, there are the cross clouds that have passed over. So we're going to go out, out around there, 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 out around the pier, Phoenix Pier, and then we're going to head west, kind of west, northwest, I guess, uh, out to the lighthouse. Okay. See you, bud. See you in the morning. Here we go, off to Phoenix Lighthouse. Tied a little bit lower than I would have liked, but I think we'll just about get away with it. So that's Phoenix Harbour. We're going to go around the edge of the harbour. Just about where you see that last um, sailboat there. What a beautiful evening. So we're just about out of our lightning and thunder warning, so it's safe enough to head off. The seagulls and the herons are wishing us well on our way. Unbelievably calm here in Chile Bay tonight. With the sails boat, sailboats out practicing. So we're gonna keep going. And you can just make out the lighthouse through the viaduct. Um, if the tide was a bit higher, I'd maybe go through, but I'm gonna go around just in case. Home for tonight. I don't know if you can see them, but there are swarms of jellyfish in the water here. Seem to have been in the locality for the last while. Not bothering anybody though. There we go. And that's Wheel Rock just in front of it. And I'll show you St. Brendan in a minute. He's up there pointing us safely out. Closer to Wheel Rock, the lighthouse. That's St. Brendan up there, pointing us west. We're getting there, slowly but surely. Here we are, Phoenix Lighthouse, built in the 1850s, abandoned by the last lightkeepers here in the 1950s, almost exactly 100 years later. A lot of history in this place. And being built in the 1850s it was built just after the famine. Uh, here in Ireland, the Great Famine. Let's see these guys. So this is a Little Samphire Lighthouse on Little Samphire Island here in Phoenix. Um, this was constructed here in Chile Bay as a navigation lead into the harbour, which we just uh, we just kayaked past 
in, I think, believe it was 1848, I think, construction started. Took until about 80, into the 1850s. That was kind of famine times here, so understandably quite, and it's quite a project to take on by any stretch of the imagination, given that all the materials would have co had to come out here by boat from the mainland. Um, and it was manned, I believe, until about 18, about 1956, when it became automated. And I think the last lighthouse keeper left here in, in 1956. But uh, it still works today. The lighthouse there, it's not as, as major a navigational aid as it used to be. Um, there's quite a, a story behind it about how the lights used to work in different colours in different directions. Now it's just a standard red light, red beam, I believe. We'll see later on when we're trying to go to sleep. Um, yeah, so that's Phoenix Lighthouse, or a little bit more correctly known, um, Little Samphire Island Lighthouse here in Tralee Bay, County Kerry, Ireland. Time to go up and find our, uh, our pitching spot for the night. This could be the interesting bit here. Come back. At least I have the, those uh, jellyfish for company. Excellent. The old New Balance. Old New Balance. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> if we can get set up in time, I might make a bolt out there on the kayak and see if we can uh, track down. There's three dolphins hang out just out here, which is why the rib was out there earlier. So they might be active here, just at uh, dusk. So I'm going to go up, get set in, set up. And uh, we might, if we still have some daylight, belt out there. Okay, I'll take some of this stuff up. And I'll come back for the, because I know I need the pump. Air beam. Okay. So this looks easier than it is because you can't get a run at it, but from what I remember. <laughs> didn't land on anybody or anything <coughs> and we're in excellent let me see where where are we going to camp grass is pretty long everywhere so we'll probably just stay out here so there it is the lighthouse look been looking forward to this for a long time So we're out in Trilly Bay, this is where our dolphin friends usually hang out, but no sign of them unfortunately tonight. Must be gone to sleep. I'm having dinner. Wonder how dolphins sleep actually. Hmm, must check that out. No look, we'll have a, another check in the morning. So that's the light, it's still operating. Hope you got that there, the red light. Uh, but it's good to see that the old lighthouse is still going. What a beautiful place. My God, what a beautiful place. It's very rare that uh, the sea is this calm out here. You could almost hear yourself think. As I mentioned in the last trip, I don't know if you saw my last ca camping trip or not, but if you did, it was way over there at the foot of the mountains. I said I was going coming this side of the bay next time to Phoenix Lighthouse or the Santar Lighthouse and here I am. So I guess we better go up, get our colour a cocoon, rather bedroom set up, and settle in for a nice cozy night. I don't know if you can get this on the audio, but you can almost hear the island speaking to you or talking to you or communicating with you. I'm guessing it's the alligator, the moss just drying out, but I'm gonna see if I can get this on audio.
dare I say it, a kind of an abrupt ending to a, a lovely evening. Just hit me the tiredness all of a sudden. And uh, so I've hit the hay. We'll, we'll explore the lighthouse properly in the morning. Uh, a little bit more about it. We'll have another look for the dolphins. But for now, I'm going to fall asleep listening to some uh, calm app thing. Not that I need it tonight, I don't think so. I'll see you in the morning. Whew. Morning, feeling much better this morning, thankfully. So let's see what the day is showing. So that's the setup, that was my cocoon for the night. Nice and dark and cozy in there and looks like it's made a little bit of rain outside, but nothing too serious. So kind of a dreary-ish day. But it's dry. So I'm gonna start getting or organized here and then we'll take a tour around the island. So just going with the chocolate and water for breakfast, just to be safe. Not sure what happened last night, just maybe I was dehydrated a little bit. Wasn't drinking a lot of water. Um, so we're gonna do a tour of the island, start on the inside, inside the wall, and then we'll have a look outside the wall after, after I've had my breakfast. A little bit of sugar and fluids I think might be enough. We won't tempt fate. Um, but that was the campsite for the night. I have to say, slept like a baby. So a little bit of the history about Little Samphire Island here. If you want to read it, pause and take a read. A lot of history around this part of the world. Um, you can see inside the wall, it's kind of a wall garden here in the front. The, you can just imagine all the vegetables, etc., being grown in here and animals kept in further. So it was a fully functioning home, really, for, for families for over a century. Little Samphire Island. And we'll see. It's the front gate. So again, here are some of the, the closer walled gardens. I believe these were for a certain type of vegetable. As I mentioned, um, by the way, Samphire used to grow wildly. On, uh, still does actually grow wildly on the island. Hence the name, obviously. Here's it coming around to the living quarters. This would have been the where they kept their animals. Down here. View across the bay. St. Brendan still keeping an eye on us. Okay, we'll go up here. I don't have a key to get in, unfortunately. It's kind of locked up as you can see, but I have been in there. There isn't really a whole lot. It's kind of gone to disrepair, unfortunately. Hopefully it'll get done up soon. Run by Kerry County Council at the moment, so I wouldn't bet on it. And here we have the tower with the light. Solar panels. And the view west. And the bird's wondering, what the hell? Who is this lunatic? They're having a peaceful morning, fishing. It's the tower from the other side. To have a look down I hope my kayak is still there had to get a new pair of Solomons for this trip uh, so far so good didn't wear them last night breaking them in gently again some of the, just some of the utilities around here and that's pretty much the actual island. That's where people used to live. I guess in this case, I've had this uh, an obsession with lighthouses. This lighthouse in particular since I was a young fella, because as I said, we used to live on the other side of the bay. So the beach that we were camping on in the other, uh, in the other video, or our first video. Um, and I grew up watching this lighthouse across the bay. 
and uh, you can just imagine as a young fellow of six, seven, eight, nine, ten years of age, it was just a complete wonder. Um, so, a little bit obsessed with it. My father used to talk about it a lot as well, um, about the light being on and the history here. So, delighted to have spent tonight. Delighted to have spent tonight. Um, I'm going to go around the outside now as well, just while we're here. I don't think we'll be able to get out here too far, but we'll go as far as we can. So this side of the island would get a lot of the weather. So really you're looking out into the North Atlantic there, that's around Brandon Point. Um, go this side and you have uh, Banna, Barrow, Banna and onwards. And out there will be the North Atlantic, so this is generally where the weather will come from. This side, so quite often this side of the island will be quite rough and yet it'll be, it'll be quite uh, sheltered on the other side, on the, I guess, the southern side of the island, so. Oh, they saw me coming. They're out of Dodge. Legend has it as well that St. Brendan, who was a famous monk here, that's the statue of him over in the uh, Great Samphire Island, took off and, and reached North America from here. Um, I think everybody agrees that Christopher Columbus probably wasn't first, but he just had the best PR agency. But um, the monks were doing it, and possibly even the Vikings before him. But uh, anyway, there are some, some, there is some evidence of Saint Brendan having reached North America. Uh, that would be back in the fifth century, I guess, fifth or sixth century. Not feeling like breakfast, so I think I'm going to pack up, get out in the water again, and uh, there's the kayak still here get out there and see if we can find out three buddies this morning. So just before I break camp, I'm just gonna run through what I was using last night. This is the crew of core. I love this tent. A bit extravagant for myself, uh, but I'm not a minimalist camper. Certainly not a lightweight camper. Um, ultra light camper anyway. So went for the core and the collar sitting inside. Sorry, the cocoon sitting inside, which is the lightweight version of the collar. Sorry about the mess there. We never got to light our fire. But just want to show you the example. This is what any normal tent will look like in this light. And this is what our cocoon looks like. So one of the big USPs here is, that was my uh, crew of blanket doubled up as a pillow. I just realized I forgot uh, my pillow again that yesterday, but so we have vents in the ceiling with covers, windows if you want to open them you know, out there. But this is nice, it's dark. I'm not sure if you can get it properly from the, from the uh, video, but it's nice, it's dark, it's peaceful, it was quiet. So yeah, not one to toot our own uh, horn as they say, but toot toot. Well done, crew cocoon, cocoon. As I said, this is the kind of the lightweight version of the we use graphene in the walls of this. That's the lightweight version of the crew color. And that would be the normal light. It also, what I like about it is, it gives us the ability to kind of have a bedroom, especially if you have a bigger tent, kind of more, more of a quiet space in a bedroom. So there it is, my messy crew, cocoon, and my setup for the night. I'm gonna break camp now, hit the water, and uh, see if we can find our three friends. This is the bit I love about air beams. The core is made of uh, an air system. Um, quite a strong one. There's pros and cons. If you're camping in really, really, really rough weather, Air, air poles generally bend a little bit more, um, but this is what I love. And voila, the tent is down. So I'm gonna pull up the pegs, fold it, roll it, rolling all the way towards the door, obviously, to let the air out. And uh, we'll be on our way in, I would say, maybe five minutes. Well, at least moving my stuff. Like I said, I'm not a minimalist camper. For two days, that's a lot of stuff. But like I said, some of it is camera equipment and I do like a little bit of comfort.
So campsite cleared. Woohoo! Just want to make sure we. I'm a firm believer in the leave no trace ethos. So need to make sure we haven't left any rubbish. No, we're clear. Good to go. So first night. I'm reckoning it might be the first night in a long, long time that anybody has resided in this island, which is an awful shame. I, I think this could be used. I mean, it's it's almost ready to go as a pretty cool glamping site. Um, but anyway, that's for people smarter than me to figure that one out. Kerry County Council, let's do something. It's an awful shame. An awful shame. But anyway, I got to spend my life, my first night on Little Samphire Island at the lighthouse. So, time to jump over the wall again and head off out to the water and head home. And back to the office. Trusty kayak. It's not fast, but by God it's reliable. Imagine coming up here when the weather is beating against the rocks. You have a southwesterly coming in. Back in the day, the old boats. Tough people. I hope we're getting these. They're our dolphin friends. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. I hope the GoPro is getting it, but there was uh, some dolphins, three dolphins, or they call them the Phoenix 3 now, out there. They came closer to the boat earlier, so I'm just hoping that the. Uh, We'll try and get out a little bit closer to them again before heading home. So there we have it. First trip to the lighthouse done. Take them off, they're foggy. What a trip. Absolutely brilliant. Lighthouse and dolphins. And I think probably the first person to sleep in that island, Little Samphire Island, for 70, 80 years. Um, brilliant. Been on the bucket list for quite a while. Uh, the core and the cocoon lived up to, to uh, give us a great night's sleep and ready to go again today but um, sorry about the noise behind this is also a working pier here in Phoenix. Uh so we're ready to head back in and a uh, little bit late to the office got distracted by the dolphins but uh, we'll get there thanks for watching and don't forget to hit subscribe you know that subscribey thing down the bottom um, because there's another one being planned, another trip being planned, uh, and this is not one you want to miss.